Hi everybody, this is James from Copters and I'll be going through the Pix4Dmatic workflow. So we open up Pix4Dmatic and we find our folders where our images are stored and drag them into the starting screen here. This project uh, involved four different flights from a Phantom 4 RTK collected in the UK. So we're going to put our data in and we're going to put it into a location where we're going to save it. This is where all our exports will be saved as well as survey reports. Once we've clicked to start, the images will automatically be imported into Pix4D Matic. These images will be located on the map using the geotags from the EXIF files of the data. Once the data is imported, you can see it appear on the map. This is a good indication that our data is in the right place using the map underlays. So first of all, we're going to set our coordinate system in Matic. Uh, if we're operating in the UK, this would be OSGB 36 and British National Grid. And the vertical coordinate system we need is ODN height. This stands for Ordnance Datum Newlin. Once we've put that in, then we can find our CSV file of our ground control point. Make sure you get right here the file format and the labeling correctly. Once the ground control has been imported, these will appear on the map as well. We can go through the images which they appear on by either hovering over the right hand column or enlarging that screen by pressing the space bar over each of the individual images. So the blue cross indicates where the software believes that ground control point file to be. Once assessing this, we can click the calibration tab and click the start button. This will orientate all our images in 3D space using the geotags and the IMU files. This can take a few minutes depending on the size of the project. Once this has been completed, we can allocate our ground control points to the corresponding targets. We can either turn these on as ground control points or we can use them as checkpoints. So the difference between the two is that checkpoints are non-biased points and then can be used to check the data. We can change this by clicking on the type section on the drop down menu and putting this down as a checkpoint. Now this will not be used in any of the process inside, this is just used to check the data. Or we can keep them as ground control points and this will be used in the actual process in the data to tighten up the model and to translate it to an absolute coordinate system. So how we do this, we can click on our ground control point either in 3D space by clicking on the blue icon or by selecting one of the ground control points in the table below. Once selected, we can click on the right hand column on the images and fine tune the location of the center of this target by clicking the left button onto the center. Just a reminder, you can also select the space bar to enlarge the images. Once you've selected a couple, then you can use the auto mark button where the software itself will go through all them images and allocate the center of the target. Once complete, we can go through the remainder of the ground control points and select the center of the targets and using the auto mark function. When this has been completed, we can click on the top right cog and start the re-optimization. Now what this means is basically we've given the software some information to work with and we want it to use that information. So the ground control points we've put down is going to use this and then tighten up the model. Once this has been completed we can check the data by generating the survey report on file, export quality and export this as a PDF. On reviewing this we can check that the residuals of the ground control points are within our tolerance and we can set the next process to create the deliverables. What deliverables we export are dependent on the job itself. Most common data formats we'll export from here will be the point cloud and the universal format like LAS, the digital surface model, DSM, or ortho mosaic, which will be as a GeoTIFF. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions about Pix4D Matic, then please reach out.